Good morning, Kinaway members, and welcome to another episode of Kinaway TV. Uh, I'd like to start this, this morning's session off by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are all meeting and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. Before we get into today's webinar, I'd like to quickly take an opportunity to remind our members of some support services that are readily available, either through Kinaway and also through other organisations. Uh, so there are a few services currently available uh, to access through Kinaway, the first being the business tax support packages. Uh, these specialist support packages help provide access to a range of bookkeeping and accounting services, uh, preparation and submission of uh, tax returns, sorry, and BAS statements, um, online access to Zero and MyOB, uh, tax and payroll obligations, superannuation and work cover obligations to staff. Uh, so if you feel this may be of use, please jump onto the Kinaway website and fill out an expression of interest. Um, another special support service which we are excited to announce, and as our CEO Scott mentioned in yesterday's Yarning Circle, which is available on the Kinaway Facebook and YouTube channels, uh, is support for our member businesses around digital capability, uh, whether it be website development, social media and marketing, e-commerce capabilities, and many other components um, surrounding a business and its digital capability. So please keep an eye out for this specialist support package as it, as it is something uh, invaluable to businesses, uh, particularly in today's uh, business climate. Another support service I'd like to mention is a new confidential phone crisis line for Victorian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, which has been launched by the Victorian Aboriginal Health Service. The service is for Indigenous people and families who feel they may, may need to have a yarn uh, with someone about their well-being. This 1-800 helpline is a statewide social and emotional wellbeing service. The helpline 1-800-95-9563 will operate seven days a week from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. As you can see the, the number on the screen. If anyone calls outside of these hours, there will be a recorded message uh, suggesting other 24-7 phone counselling services uh, such as Lifeline, uh, Beyond Blue and Kids Helpline and an opportunity for the person to leave a message and have their call returned the following day will be there. Uh, and finally, the team here at Kinaway are working hard to be present for our members in this challenging time. Uh, so keep an eye out as we look to host more webinars uh, revolving around mental health and wellbeing uh, and business and personal development. There's plenty of content already available on these topics available um, on our Facebook and YouTube channels. So please feel free to jump on uh, and make yourself familiar with the content. Along with these webinars, we have a support package that, as mentioned earlier, along with any support of business support, any sort of business support, such as Kinaway Business Reviews. Uh, so if you feel you may need any assistance, uh, please feel free to get, get in contact with the team here at Kinaway. For today's webinar, uh, we're excited to announce that we have Isaac Harrison joining us as he presents on the basics of starting a podcast as an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander organisation. Isaac is a well-known and respected member of the Aboriginal business community. He's an Aboriginal entrepreneur, our founder and director of Bunjil Energy, host of Deadly Discussions podcast. He, is, he, has served, he has served as a ministerial council member for Victorian state government and has recently branched out in consultancy to help Indigenous businesses, uh, help Indigenous business founding uh, Indigenous Business Consultants Australia. I'm sure Isaac will appreciate this, but he's also a deadly football player as well, uh, playing down in Melbourne. Um, in today's webinar, Isaac will be touching on the reality of, start, of starting a podcast as there, are, as there are many unaccounted for factors involved, such as the time taken to invite guests, the time to record, uh, time taken to publish media about the podcast, your ongoing emotional intelligence to host properly, uh, and the ongoing passion to cater for the listening experience for your target audience. A really interesting and maybe even uh, neglected form of media and marketing for businesses, which I'm sure we're all, we are all looking forward to learning more about today. I'd like to welcome Isaac to today's webinar. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them on either the Kinaway Facebook or YouTube channels, as I'll be joining Isaac after the presentation to address them. And as always, please leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications to receive future Kinaway updates. Here I am. Thanks, James. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me to share on the podcast. Before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge traditional landowners who I'm uh, recording on, uh, and that's the uh, Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation and Victoria Azamari from Queensland. 
has been very kind to me and uh, a lot of the connections with traditional owner groups and other uh, Victorian Aboriginal business people um, has been really uh, just a wonderful experience and I look forward to continually to invest in the Victorian Aboriginal business landscape. Um, so I'm Isaac Harrison, as uh, James said, and thanks for the compliments on football. My team actually beat James in the uh, Indigenous National Championship uh, last year, so I'd just like to remind James of that one. And um, before we get started, um, also explain a little bit about myself and then we'll get into the podcast. So um, another disclaimer, podcasts um, sound really fun and they're quite um, exciting and it's sort of like the key word, everyone seems to be doing a podcast these days. Uh, but there's more that goes with just setting up a podcast and then continuing it on. And it's more than just having a chat, it's gotta be intentional. And it costs a lot of emotional energy to get up and, and do it every week or every fortnight or once a month. So you really want to be strategic about how much time you're going to invest in. So we're going to touch over some basic principles that um, I do for daily discussions and why, where I target my audience and what, what sort of space I stick to. Um, and then we can walk through, you know, so you can wait for yourself. Hey, is this something for my business or organization? So let's bring up the slides. All right, starting a podcast straight into it. So here's me and uncle at one of the... Um, our Dramana Solar Fund that we were part of a while ago for Bunjil Energy, we're no longer a part of. And uh, Uncle come down to do the, the Welcome to Country. Um, it looks like we're at a, a tip site because our litter is in the background, um, but I love that shot um, that he come down. And here I'm explaining about solar farms um, so Uncle understands, and that was on um, Bunurong, Bunurong Country. So, um, so again, blessed, and I love it down here on the peninsula. Uh, about myself, uh, you probably know me from Bunjil Energy. Uh, last couple of years, we founded the business Commercial Solar, um, and we've been very fortunate to have a lot of wins within the social uh, procurement space here in Victoria. Not so much in the federal space, but a lot here in the social procurement um, and offering that social value of more jobs and uh, also procuring from other Aboriginal businesses have been one of our key factors in um, gaining more momentum as we bring other um, blackfellas into our supply chain and also into our um, you know, sales force or how we go to the market, we go as a group and we're able to um, divide and sort of conquer um, that market and, and make sure we all win. So a win-win situation. So my uh, Nana is a Biri Gubba woman from North Queensland, uh, Smallwood. Um, so she was born up in Air. So was my mother. And my uh, grandfather is a Cubby Cubby man of the Undumbinbi uh, tribe. My uncle will probably get up me for mispronouncing that of the Kabi Kabi Nation. And so my um, grandfather as well was a South Sea Islander um, from Vanuatu. So he was Kanaka, well, his grandfather before him was Kanaka during the blackbirding uh, process. So he was brought over and married into uh, the Kabi Kabi tribe. My father uh, is a white Australian with uh, English heritage to Yorkshire, um, area of England. His uh, great grandfather migrated over, I think, second fleet. He came over on the boat to Maryborough, Queensland, and pretty much stayed there all the way to my father, who married my mum. And I said, and I grew up in Harvey Bay, so I said, I'm out of here. So I moved to Brisbane, then eventually back on country, and then now in Melbourne for the last six years. So that's a bit of my story and how I end up here today. And I'm proud of both my um, heritage and both my cultures. Um, have gone through hardships and struggles to bring um, me to where I am today. And I build upon that foundation for my family. I'm a husband and uh, to my beautiful wife, um, Amy, and a father of two and, well, three, if you include our pug, which is a pug Aaliyah, which is half King Charles and a pug. So a uh, rescue dog. So she keeps us um, busy. Uh, next slide. Here we go. So, what is a podcast? So, a podcast is usually a recording that is available digitally. Now, this is important to understand that um, it's not. You know, we can get caught up in saying, unless I go to a studio, unless I have high definition cameras, unless I have all this gear, then I can't do a podcast. You know, you could literally FaceTime another brother or sister and record that FaceTime and upload that um, audio. And I'm sure someone somewhere will get um, some sort of value out of that content. So a podcast can cover a breakfast show, like a radio show. It also could be an audio recording from like a seminar or a conference. Uh, it could also be a dedicated session where you go in the recording booth, like old school, 
and you sit up and everyone gets mic'd up and you go through what you're going to be talking about. Um, you've got soundproof, you've got everything, you've got, um, you know, a production person. It could even be a debate. So that's another fact to take in people debating um, or coming on and having a having a discussion, a disagreement, and recording that. Um, it all, and as I said just before, it could even just be a FaceTime call that you t- take down the audio from that and put that across the sound waves. So the podcast is really limited by your own imagination. Um, quality is a factor, and we'll touch on why it's really not that that important. It is an important factor, but the content is the king. So content reigns supreme. So you've got to focus on what content you're going to produce and um, how, how often you're going to produce it. And then you want to get that out because there'd be people out there wanting to learn about Indigenous business or wanting to learn about um, social entrepreneurship or people wanting to learn about selling, you know, arts online and what's the issues we're facing in the art community where we've got people, you know, replicating it or selling it or, you know, political things as well, perspectives. People want perspectives. They want to know a different perspective from theirs so that they can understand the world in a better or different light. So if your content is unique, if your content is easy to access and it's constant, you will have no problem building an audience. Now, it's hard in this world of comparison where everyone's got their phone out taking selfies and getting it into Photoshop and making themselves look deadly. It's hard to look at that and go, oh, I'll never be like that. But you don't want to think about it. You don't want to compare yourself to anyone else. And we'll go through why each person who has um, a different personality has a different value proposition when it comes to a podcast. So if you have no problem building an audience, and the other one you want to know is quantity over quality. If you're getting big numbers listening to your podcast, but they're not listening all the way through, then they're sort of defeating the purpose of setting out. You're getting people listen for 10, 13 seconds. Ah, oh, not for me. I'm out of here. What you want is a loyal group of people that are listening all the way through and are excited for your next episode or even saying, oh, could you interview this or talk about that? That's the sort of engagement. You want high quality connection and engagement over just pumping out stuff because, you know, you read it in a plan somewhere that that works. You need the, the rubber to hit the road. Now, Spotify and iTunes, Stitcher, whatever you may use, have extensive range of podcasts available with many different genres. So people can look, again, at this vast library and become discouraged and say, well, no one wants to really hear my story. And I'll show you with Deadly Discussions, the biggest thing, even though I went to talk about social entrepreneurship, the story on how people got into that social entrepreneurship is what people wanted to listen to. They wanted to say, why did you take that corporate job in this or that? Or why did you give up that corporate job? Or why did you start this small business? Or why did you leave playing sport? That people want to know the story and that's how they're understanding. Because those stories show us sort of like indicators in our life, which turn to take. And then you remember that person's story and you remember the outcome and it can encourage you in those moments. So, as a First Nations man or woman, one thing to remember um, is don't be discouraged. Our people are incredible at telling stories, and that's probably our strength and our weakness. You know, um, when we're in the bunjo, when we're, we're pumping and we're going after a lot of new um, business, and you'd be like, okay, what's the deal with this customer? And someone turns around and tells you a story. You're like, no, no, I just need the data. So it can be our, our biggest strength and biggest weakness um, our storytelling. And remember as well, our people were oral tradition people. So we would tell through Dreamtime stories, songline. We would share the history of our nation through telling those stories. And, and as a community, we'd listen and correct um, one another and say, hey, brother, I, just, I don't think that's right. Or we will co- self-correct our stories. And there's many other cultures who've done that before, um, Jewish culture, um, other nations that are First Nation people who um, had some form of written or art, but they did a majority of passing down story through that oral um, tradition. So First Nation people were amazing at storytelling. So make sure you remember that as your strength, as your gift. Um, and don't be afraid to step back and really say, where am I coming from here and get that person connected in. All right, this is an exercise. So I can't see anyone. It's not a Zoom call. So um, I just want everyone to raise their hands. We're going to start to so raise your hands. Now, when you don't satisfy this um, 
criteria will not say you just put your hands down now obviously you're not in a room so you can't see it but it's going to paint a point so everyone just raise their hand i'll do this hand so i can still use my mouse so all the little hands being raised okay so how many keep your hand up if you are or you know someone who's an aboriginal torres strait islander person in victoria leave your hands up how many of those or how many yourself or people you know have businesses keeping your hand up now keep your hand up if that business owner has a family so i'm assuming there's one so that includes me as well now how many of those are in the arts so i'm not in the arts so my hand goes down so keep your hand up if you're in the arts are you doing paintings or prints or um you know even collaborating with um hats or clothing or different things like that now how many of those guys uh or, or yourself are selling online now whoever's left or if we have one person left we should be left with an indigenous entrepreneur who is a family man or woman with a business and arts selling online so picture this phrase and this is so this is like painting your value proposition this is very important when you're starting to think of your podcast and how that's going to look like to the outside world because we have the ideas and sometimes it's hard to get that idea across and projected to someone else and we're going to go for a little project the diagram too. So it would come out something like this. Family centered indigenous entrepreneur shares her wins and losses in creating a sustainable Aboriginal art online store and her latest podcast, Black Don't Crack. And I love, I just had to put Black Don't Crack in there. So um, when I was thinking of a generic name. So what we've got right there, and if we break that down, and you can change this up, you see the best way is you've got to ask yourself questions and you write down your answers, and then you start working out what parts you want that to come into the podcast and what it will be built on. So we've got a family-centered, so right there you're going to appeal to families, indigenous entrepreneur, you're going to appeal to the wider social space, you're going to appeal to other Aboriginal entrepreneurs, shares uh, her wins and losses, so now you've got something to connect to with the average person walking on the street, wins and losses, creating a sustainable, so you've got sustainability, you've got Aboriginal art, you've got selling online e-commerce, and then you've got a bit of sense of humor in there and a bit of a bit of whip, quip, um, which is black don't crack, which is you know saying uh, black fellas don't age that well because of the natural oils that come out of our pores. So you're sort of painting this is a serious show. We're talking about wins and losses. It's sustainable. Selling art online, the challenges we faced it. But then you're sort of finishing with the black don't crack. So people are sort of feeling, all right, it's going to be semi-serious, but also there's a bit of there's a bit of joy in it. There's a bit of you know a bit of light listening to you know um, some podcasts I listen to. It sounds like you're listening to someone from the Bureau of Statistics on the ABC Radio. So listen, talking about the, the names today and we saw the numbers go up. You know, and that's sort of like disengaging. So you want something that people can hit play, hit go and bang, they're thrown into this conversation where they're learning something new, uh, but they're also getting a laugh out of it. They're also feeling a, a, a bit of inspiration. So you wanna hit a few things. You wanna have a few things that are, are stimulating people's you know, brain, also their heart, um, and in some cases, well-being, their body. So let's move on to the next one. Next biggest important, probably the, the second biggest important. So now we have the general idea down and how you can pitch yourself to the wider market. We need to consider um, that 50% of that podcast is going to be your guest. Now, a good guest can take your podcast to the next level. I think one of my most hit um, podcast or most downloaded podcasts is, is Tim Werner um, from Coles Indigenous um, Officer at Coles because uh, of the story of what Tim's had to overcome and I'm just I'm pretty I didn't know this about uh, Tim so I'm sitting there nearly trying not to cry and that got a lot of downloads because people really symbolized with you know the losses of a family and the shifting and then finding out you're a black fella and then trying to find your way back and then find your place and and that symbolized a lot with our community and not just our community i had people come up from um you know recruitment trade recruitment or um, apprentice organizations saying oh, i was listening to that podcast about tim you know and then and, and that event i was actually actually tim's right over there you know because he was over there doing the recruitment stuff for coles so um they're the sort of things you want to go for. You want to let your guests be, you know, if the content's king, then your 
your guest is the prince or the queen. Like you, you put them up there um, and they will, you make them look good. And in return, that's how you're getting that um, positive um, brand affirmation regarding yourself, but also if it's in your business or organization. Now, a poor guess can destroy your podcast. So we'll start with the good guess first. We'll go into that. A good guess is like um, projecting, like a projector screen. If it's if it's a good guess, it's going to come up clear. The audience are going to understand what you're talking about. They're able to just pick it up at the 20-minute 20, 20 mark or the two-minute mark and bang, they're straight into it. You, they know what's happening. They know who, who's talking. A poor guest is like a poor quality projector screen. It's going to muddy your image. It's going to lose focus on what your podcast is trying to achieve and communicate on the sound waves. Now, the second part of that with your guest is getting a good brief to the guest. So a brief explanation of what the podcast is about and your expectations for them coming on and vice versa. Now, this doesn't have to be a 27-page document. And it doesn't have to be um, a long interview process you know, or a phone call because we know some of our best guests out there are busy. They're go-getters. They're doing stuff. You know, it's very hard to say, all right, give me a call. I'll send you an invite. I'll, I'll fill out this form. So if you're able to create a couple of sentences outlining the time frame of the, the podcast, when they log on, how long you record, how long you Q&A, similar to what we're doing today, questions that you're going to hit them with. I don't do any more than three questions for daily discussions. It's what's your story? How did you end up where you are today? And where are you going in the future? And that's three questions our podcast go from 20 to 30 minutes. And that person's just able to share that story and I'll interject now and again to keep them going or interrupt them if they're talking too long, <laughs> which um, sometimes happens. So we'll go into the next slide. Here's a, um, a visual of that projector screen. If you had Black Don't Crack about our sister girl now who's doing a, a, a podcast on social, um, you know, art online and it's social entrepreneurship and she's a, um, a fearless leader. If you got that on, you've got other guests coming in and, and reflecting that goal and the story of the podcast, it's very clear to the outside. If you bring a guest in that sort of muddied the water, we did a poor brief and they were like, oh, I thought it was 20 minutes. So then they didn't prepare. So they ran out of stuff to talk about um, or they were, uh, they got nervous and they forgot, but then you didn't, you know, continue the conversation. So that's the importance of having a good guest um, versus a poor guest and also a good brief with that guest that comes on. The second point, which is easy to access. Now, the world's changed a lot since I started doing podcasts and my best mate in high school, uh, he was involved in radio. We did some stuff for radio too. And the process of getting that on the airwaves uh, was a lengthy one compared to today. So today, after we record, and we'll touch about hardware later, but it's not the focus of this one. So after we record, how do we get that to show up on Spotify with that deadly little square that has your face and what you do and what episode it is so you can share it? How do we get that to that? So this is a bit more of a different process, and I'll jump through to the software platform I use, um, and there's many others that do it. So, And we'll touch on the end about a free one as well that you can do on your phone. So most of us already have existing social media channels, websites, and mailing lists. So how do we get those to show up in that little thumbnail link? Without overcomplicating it, we need a podcast host. So we need a host to then link us to that distribution channel, which is just Spotify. Now I've got our little um, diagram here. So we go record, we get that onto the server, we get that over to Spotify, and then Spotify gets that to your binungs, ears. Um, yeah, it gets it to your ears. So, um, And I'm going to jump to Blueberry, so I'm going to have to exit this little one at the moment. Stay that and share new screen. And there we go. Okay, here we go. So this is called Blueberry Podcasting. Now, 
this is where you go once you've got your mp3 file or you or you've extracted from the mp4 if it's a video or it's a wav so you've got the file and now how do we get that so this service i pay for and because i have no sponsorship it's sort of like a hobby that i pay for it myself so you take it out and you put it on here you'd have all sorts of statistics and analytics this is important as well if you wanted long term to get a sponsorship so when people say, okay, what's your downloads or, you know, what sort of your demographic, you're able to easily access that. So that's really important if you're looking long term and, and probably worth investing in getting a paid service. You've got affiliate, affiliate programs, you've got all sorts of stuff. Um, you even got the option to build a website from this post service. Um, and then you've got your destinations here, get on Spotify. Now, for each individual platform that you want to get on, um, they may require you to set an account up on their end and link it back, but shouldn't take too long. YouTube can show you, or they even have really good step-by-step -step processes to do it. If you do need help, though, you can send me an email at the end or give us a bell. Always happy to have a yarn. So for this case, let's say we created a new episode. We go create a new episode. It'll load up a form like this. So this is also where you want to put your copy in, you want to put your title and your subtitle, and you can schedule it or publish it immediately. So let's say we go, the title is, um, so what I usually do would go uh, black, don't crack, there we go. And I put my subtitle episode number or the um, guest name, and I saw Dion there. So Dion, wow. Darkies Designs, Dion getting a shout out. There you go, brother. And we could say Darkies Design slash Supply Oz. Now, for your content, the first two, three sentences is going to be really important. That's what's going to catch someone's eye when they're scrolling through. And they're scrolling through, and even in your thumbnail, when it pops up. So you want something that's going to catch someone's eye. So during the podcast, you want to have the old fashioned notepad and with your brief, which is your two or three questions, you want to start filling out keywords that you remember. So if I'm talking to Dion and Dion saying, okay, I'm a Torres Strait man. I grew up on an island with no electricity. Right there, you've got something to say to someone oh, grew up on an island with no electricity. Dan, correct me if, if you did or you didn't. Um, two, uh, Dion's talking about you know, experienced a lot of uh, racism and um, discrimination when coming through. Um, he, he did design school, and as he went through design school, people said, we don't want to see that black fella stuff up on everything. You know, it's just overdone. So he goes into saying, addressing stereotypes. You've got two. And we go into three. We we'll say, I don't know, his first business failed. My first startup, it failed. And I had depression for a long time. So right there, you've got three points. So you jump in here, say Torres Strait man who grew up island with no power addresses. And then you go on like that and you keep going, keep going. And you could make it even simpler. You could even just have dot points. Grew up on an island, overcame racism, business, failed, first year. So right there, when people see that, they go, hey man, I've, I've failed in business or I'm wanting to get into business. Well, I grew up on an island with no electricity, you know? And people start connecting in with that and that's what gets you your click and then that gets what the person's listening to because it's appealing to them because in this day and age the highest the biggest currency is attention to get people's attention is so important and that's really difficult to get now when there's so much information being pumped all the time so if you hit that you upload your media file one two and you hit publish now with this service publish within a couple of hours it'll end up on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple iTunes, everyone that I've registered on their end and registered here on this, um, the hosting service will automatically go up. Then you're able to take that URL 
and then put that in your social medias. So we could easily show, duh, 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 going back, back to the So we go back, gets to Spotify, gets to your listener. You can take all the extracts. Now, different platforms like Instagram require a little bit more of a deft touch because you're going to have to take out a snippet and make the graphic and then put them together and then make that under 30 seconds, under a minute, so it doesn't go to IGTV. And then you want to put it as a sample. So there's a bit more editing. And again, it comes back to our original question. Um, how much are you going to invest in this? And what are the objectives? Of your podcast so if you're saying i want the objectives to be getting my name out there i want the objectives to create awareness or if it's about a podcast on aboriginal health you know my goals is to get into community so i'm going across every single platform it's about coming back reflecting and saying am i hitting those objectives am i going in the right direction consistency my water now consistency is key so start, so start a good following. You've got to be very clear on your target audience. So for daily discussions, the target audience was um, other social entrepreneurs or people working in the social procurement space, um, CFO, CEO, it's creating awareness of what's happening um, within the indigenous business sector in the wider social entrepreneurship space. So that's how I selected my guests um, so that they would line up with where the, the podcast was going. So people who are looking for um, more connections in that space, people who are looking to learn, or understand, say you, you just got a job as a, um, you know, someone in a social procurement space or you're a CEO and you've heard of Aboriginal business social, and you're like, what is this? Instead of the old thing of sitting there on Wikipedia or sitting and um, trying to work out yourself, you come across other forms of content, both video and audio, that then you're able to digest um, and then you also then attributed that knowledge and that gain from that person who hosts the podcast. So that's how that could work. So if you wanted also to unite, people can use podcasts to unite political causes or different things like that. So people are becoming on the same page because you're getting in like-minded people and you're saying, this is the direction we're going, like a story. Here's the beginning, here's the end. This is the direction we're going, the narrative. Are you coming along with us? So creating that consistency, I would commit to uh, once a week, fortnight, or once a month, as long as Mob know when it's coming out, roughly what time. Um, in my peak when I was doing it every week, I went to fortnight a month, and now I'm so busy with COVID, I can barely get one every two months. Um, it was once a week, and that took a lot of time because it was like book the guests, choose their record, Thursday it's uploaded. And so that was the routine, and that was taking, you know, two to three hours a week to do all of that. And so that's sort of what you've got to work out. Now we've got a lot of time free because in Victoria, we're not traveling as much because of restrictions and different things. It could be a good way to use that extra hour. So you're learning how to do this and the other person comes on learning and you're teaching other people and you're keeping the momentum going for your personal brand, but also your business or organization. So selecting, if you're a big organization, selecting a host um, or a series of hosts is really important because they're going to be the face, they're going to be attributed, attributed with it um, long term. So you want to choose someone who can, um, you know, conduct themselves, speak well, but you're not too much, you don't have to speak too well, as long as your guest coming on can hold their own as well. Now, having two introverts on the podcast probably wouldn't be the best idea. <laughs> so, all right. Um, consistency, you elect what you want to do. The best way to invite guests, I found, like, so practical, uh, email invite, you can use your calendar, um, you can send a link. You want it as accessible for your listeners, for your guests as well. So you're saying, hey, brother, I've got this podcast. Hey, sister, I've got this podcast. We talk about these three things. It's on this date. This is the times I do it every week. And that's good for yourself or good practice to say this. I do it this time every week. I can't go outside of that. And so if the guests can't get there, then you just say, listen, we can't do it. Unless it's like a very special um, event or topic that you want to talk about. Otherwise, you say, no, nah, listen, I do it this week, every week. You want that routine to come in because then your clients are getting used to it and they're actually getting, for lack of a better word, are trained to say, okay, podcast is coming out this week. Make sure we got to tune in or make sure I listen this week as well. Um, so you send them that link or calendar invite. You can use Gmail. You can use Calendly are the other ones. Um, and one of the biggest things I learned, especially from business, 
is uh, if it ain't in the diary, it's not going to happen. If it ain't in the diary, I just won't even see it because I get up every morning, look at my diary, that tells me what I'm going to do or the night before I look at it, I know what I'm going to do. So if a guest, uh, another little handy fact, if a guest cancels, it's always good to have a backup. If they cancel, life happens. Don't get too frustrated and we know all the time things can change. But I would always just keep someone for a backup, maybe a close friend of yours. Say, hey, brother, can I just keep you a backup? I've been doing my podcast um, in case someone drops out um, that I can get you in to jump in. And you, we all know them talented sisters or brothers that can just get in front of the camera, or pick up a microphone at a panel event and just improv a speech. We all have those in our circles. So uh, maybe it's just having out of them as a backup and ready to go. So distribution sake, um, always check for your peak social media times uh, for each individual channel. Again, it's probably one of those things where you don't want to take on too much. So if you're, we'll go back to Brother Dion as an example, um, or you, actually we'll use Mandy. We'll use Mandy. I've seen a question from Mandy. We'll talk about it soon. But so Mandy, for example, um, doing stuff around health and well-being, her posting for peak times on socials is going to look a lot different from a brother who's got a podcast, who's a CFO for a finance, Indigenous financial literacy. You know, he'd be posting out to LinkedIn at different times where men you'd be posting on Instagram or Facebook or even uh, Pinterest at different times. So you need to research each one where the peak times are and you want to get your message um, out there. Hey, this is the podcast. And you want to get that into routine. And then to backtrack and properly systemize, create templates. So what hashtags you're using, what times you're posting, and just have them on different um, Word docs or notepad where you can just copy and paste. So that's going to save you time or invest in something like Hootsuite, um, which you can post all at once. But again, due diligence on each one, reflect your objectives, how much time you wanted to put in this, and then where to go from there. So finally, have fun. That sounds like I'm coaching five-year-olds at football, soccer that is. Have fun, guys. But it's true. Have fun. you got to have fun. If you're not going to love it, then you're going to quit it. You're not going to have that that passion to go long term. We spoke about, um, James introduced it about the passion. If you don't have the passion for what you're sharing, it's just going to run out. You're going to run dry. You're going to burn yourself out because it's another thing where you're picking up for an hour or 30 minutes or 20 minutes and you're investing, you're listening properly to what the person's saying. You're, you're taking information, you're packaging up for your audience and you're posting it out there. So make sure you have fun, fun and the other indicator for that I'm enjoying what I'm doing is if I'm doing it and no one even listens or no one even cares, but I love doing it, then I'll keep doing it. You know, so it's like um, it's like anything. If you if you do love it, if you love the work you do, then you're not going to work a day of your life. So if you love it, the podcast, it might even be about um, you know I'm part of the Indigi Nerds group on Facebook with other brothers and sisters. We love you know gaming and comics and and um, different things like that. But you could be a black fellow starting a podcast on um, Star Trek, you know, and there's some of the similarities of what you learned as Star Trek that got you through those, you know, tough years growing up. You had a single mum and, and that sort of thing, you know. It can be anything like that. And if you enjoy it, you're going to go the distance. So you can commit to your one week, two weeks, monthly, and that sort of thing. Here are my other top tips. Um, during your podcast, let your guests do the majority of talking. Um, if they need help, ask more questions. Research your guest. I think that's answering sort of one of the, the Mandy uh, said. Research your guest, background, hobbies, family, and passions. So I'm, I love like a trident approach. So I wouldn't go over more than three. Um, you just don't want to over inundate yourself and then stress that you're going to overthink it. You know, three points. You know, we had James interview. So James played football. James did an economics degree. And he's a family man, bang. And I know he likes running. So I've got three or four things I can bring up if the conversation were ever just to go into a love. Um, the other one is take risks. So sometimes your guests, and this will depend on your emotional intelligence, which everyone can work on. Sometimes your guests will sort of open a door to something. They'll, they'll be talking about you know growing up here and, and doing this and then business and then sort of this incident. And they might sometimes skip over it. And you might feel, oh, maybe that's controversial arcs, but taking risks not only, you know, proves your courage, but your listeners are like, oh, I can't believe, oh, did they ask that? But there's some sort of 
um, peaks. You want it to flow like a wave. You want it to flow like a wave so that people listening, tension, mellow, listening, mention something, and then keeping that dance going all the way through. And don't be afraid. And if you look at, um, I can't say his name, Mark from, uh, what's his name? Um, Yellow Brick Road has a podcast and he asks us some pretty straight questions and that's his personality. But it wouldn't hurt for you to maybe ask a tough question or even call someone out and go, oh, what about this? You know, but as long as you can mend it together and say, oh, agree to disagree, and then you sort of move on. People want to see that a little bit of drama, uh, for lack of better uh, lack of better words. My grandma grew us up on Bold and Beautiful in Days of Our Lives, so maybe it's geared in me to have a bit of drama. So um, open strong, finish strong. So come in strong. G'day, everyone. How are you going? Welcoming people. Do your welcome to country. Get them in if it lulls, and then finish strong. Thank you so much for coming today. Make sure you thank everyone for coming. Thank you for coming. Um, you know, you can follow us here, hit the link here, subscribe there, and then go on from there. And last little uh, special note uh, is content is king, your guest is the prince or princess. So treat them as such. Without the guest, you're just talking to yourself. Um, so that's the difference between the podcast. And the last little bonus bit I thought I'd put in there, because um, I know mob will say, how much does it cost? And is there free ones? So Anchor is free and you can get that on your phone and you can put a daily little lapel mic in. Um, you can call up someone on there or book a time in there with them or do that and it'll spit it out and get it out on their system, Anchor system. But also there'll be like a little extra to get it out on Spotify or get it up at uh, um, you know, Stitcher or something else like that. So that's a good way to practice. So you could even do a couple of practice ones. You know, you could just say, I'm going to ask you three questions. You could go to your elders in the community and say story of community elders and just go out there at the phone and just have a yarn and have a chat and, you know, a little bit of editing and put it up. Hardware. So microphone, as you can see, I've got my microphone here. He sits over here. He's a roadie, costs a couple hundred dollars. Um, I decided to make that investment once I realized that I'd be doing more daily discussions. I'd also be doing live webinars with um, other organizations as a, a panelist or a guest. And um, I went invested in that because I knew long time it would it'd pay itself off. Camera, uh, also invested in a better quality camera, 1080p or 1080hd. Um, there's other ways you could work around it, but I found the most easiest plug and play was just get yourself a log Logitech plug it in, integrate it to your computer, off you go. Uh, a mixer, now this is sort of like, you know, DJs have a mixer, they've got soundboards and different things like that. This is probably if you're going long term, um, this is probably if you're um, really going to invest as they cost money and the training required to get your head around it. Um, the other factor is an online studio, so Kinaway today brought me into an online studio, which I think is StreamYard, so StreamYard, um, brings me in, brings a guest in, has different plugins, um, you're able to brand it. So that's another ongoing cost. I think they even have a freemium service as well. Um, two, software. So making sure your computer isn't from 1999 and making sure that it's up to date, make sure there's no glitches. Um, and the other important factor of that is plugging that computer into the yellow cable. You see that little port on the side, Ethernet? Plug it in because the last thing you want is doing Mr. Roboto when you're talking on a live stream or a podcast or things cut out. A lot of that's unrecoverable, so you can't really edit that out. And I didn't have there, but it's really up to you. Deadly Discussion has very little editing. Um, Deadly Discussions has very little um, involvement, even with an intro. You know, I've contemplated playing the Yiddy key and bringing that in and doing the welcome pre-recorded. But I like the idea of just doing it raw and talking like in a discussion. And that's why we call it deadly discussions. But you might want to put something else, maybe have a song or different things like that, at the intro, in the outro. Um, but it's really up to your personal choice, you know. And also, you've got to be mindful that I've had this where I've asked the story and, and, and brother um, uh, Chili opened up with um, story of violence and, and things that happened in his life. And I actually had to make it explicit on uh, on Spotify and those sort of things. So it got ranked because if kids listen to um, certain things like that. So you also be mindful of remembering what was said in the conversation. Some things could cross a line. And so you want to do the right thing by your audience and their community because they could be playing in their car with the kids 
and then someone drops the f-bomb or starts talking about a story that's probably not appropriate for that age so you want to make sure that you you rank that um, properly and that's it for me today so we'll go to questions but if you need to reach out to me for any help with your business um, i do just help mob out for indigenous business consultants australia which I recently uh, created last year just to help out other mob that were always asking me to help. There's only so much pro bono that I could do. So I was like, okay, well, what can I do here? Um, if it's anything regarding the business and, oh, Liam's appeared. Oh, he's disappeared. <laughs> That's a first. Hi, Liam. Bye, Liam. Um, Bunjil uh, Energy for our commercials um, solar that we do across the uh, state of Victoria and then deadly discussions. You could find me there. So thank you so much. I think James will be back. Thanks, my brother. I thought we had a we had a special guest there that you might have brought along. <laughs> uh, I saw Liam pop up um, with that. So um, yeah, look, I, I was thinking, uh, you know, there was a uh, possibility of doing a quick little five minute sort of mini sort of uh, podcast, but we did have uh, plenty of questions that has come through while you're presenting. So we'll um, we'll try to get through those, and then um, you know, if, if we do have some spare time, we might get Liam back in, and we can do a quick little. Um, quick little trial run uh, of a podcast because <laughs> uh, I know that he wants to get involved after sending pop-up. Um, so the first one, brother, is uh, from Michael. And he asks, have you realized you've had a poor guest during the podcast? Are there any tips of guiding the conversation? Yeah, so I won't mention names. Um, <laughs> um, so poor for me was probably um, the topics that they were sharing weren't lining up with that core objective of social entrepreneurship and um, you know, share story. It was more or less of what they were um, doing and, and why they were doing that. And so it sort of left off topic. So I had to try my my uh, earnest to try to get them back to sharing on um, that story and the whys of why they did that. So, you know, this, yeah, everyone knows Simon um, Sinek, a, a good, you know, he talks about knowing your why. So you're trying to get that person back to, you know, why did you start the business? Why are you here? Otherwise, people can go on a ta tangent. And the other poor one is people can become too technical. So you might get um, people that come from Aboriginal health or different things, and they're going to talk about technicalities of policy and legislation, which is great. But for your everyday listener, they need to understand it. So like they say that, um, you know, I saw brother um, um, Liam from, used to be, I forget Liam's surname now, um, he's in IT, uh, but he shared about the the Fainwood, the Fainyard technique but then there's also the technique which is explained to me as a five-year-old so if someone can't explain it as a five-year-old then it's going to be really difficult for people of different walks of life who specialize in many different things to understand where you're coming from sure sure and just on that are, are there any, any sort of topics that you'd recommend to avoid um during the podcast or you you know is, is it just depending on each individual sort of host or um... yeah yeah just have your boundaries on um you know, for us, it was telling the story. So one of them went into some of the violence growing up and, and others have grown up sharing about domestic violence in the podcast. So if that sort of fits my trend, because it, it shows people the reality of um, what our first people have gone through, you know, granddad working for rations, granddad, his father and father, um, blackbirding, you know, Nana as well, stolen generation. And, it, and it, the trauma being passed down it shows that impacts. And so for people listening, it's like a shock, like, oh, yeah. you know, that happens, you know, and the person I see at Coles across me or the person I see over here um, in the business um, has gone from this different starting point in life. So, but there are the times where when people uh, maybe will slag someone, maybe will criticize someone, um, you know, on the political landscape or personally, they're the ones that you're like, okay, that can't be in the conversation. So you want to remove that because they're, you know, if you said nothing, then you're consenting to that. So you want to just be careful of what was said. And those sort of moments you just jot down. What I would do if there's something like that, I'd jot down the, the time uh, yep. on the timer when they were said and just go back and chop it out, you know, and let them know as well. Say, hey, brother, you know, I had to chop that out because it's, you know, not sort of what we're trying to achieve here. So. Sure. Perfect. Uh, this one's from Liam. Uh, is this a form of content marketing I should really focus on or is it, or should I focus on the more traditional methods and podcasting be additional? Yeah, sure. So for some complex subjects, um, the story in an audio format, podcast or a stream, 
people are going to be able to understand because they can see you and they can feel your tone as opposed to maybe a graphic that you've posted up that's got a couple of words because everyone is going to read that differently. So, you know, what you guys have done with the attack support, you've got the TNCs and uh, checkpoints of how to be, you know, fill the criteria, but then you're also explaining that in, you know, a format that people can understand. So before, you know, five, six, ten years ago, getting your big face on screen was like, oh, shame, oh, shame. No, nah, don't do that, brother, you know. Oh, look, he's a big nerd himself. I think he's deadly. And now it's like, well, we're doing this to be just uh, practical for one another, to help one another. And so when you've got an announcement from, you know, I'd love to see more Aboriginal health showing, this is how you put a mask on. This is how you, you take one off. You know, this is what you do. You don't do and really focusing on that because what it's creating is you're becoming the expert in that field and the experts are the ones that people are going to go to when they need help so your business whatever it may be you know taking mandy people are thinking uh, aboriginal traditional health methods or cultural applications to bring you know peace and relaxation they're going to think mandy because she's put herself as i'm the expert and also your confidence will start to build so you become more confident as you're doing it more and you'll get to the point where you're not thinking, oh, I've got to say, you know, get nervous. If we, you know, you just, you'll start doing it and everyone starts somewhere. So you don't stress. Um, the first step's always the hardest. And then after that, it gets easier. Nice. Nice little plug there on the uh, Kinaway support as well. That way. <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, the next one is from Jackson. Um, and he asks, is running a podcast with guests absolutely necessary? Is it okay yeah. to run a solo podcast? Do you have any tips for this? Yeah, so if you did that, Jackson, it'd be like um, it'd be like a, a vlog uh, sort of setup where it's yourself um, having a yarn. And I know Uncle uh, Alec uh, Dumaji up at uh, uh, Dumaji um, Peoples there, he does like video ones. Where he shares what's happening and the latest and issues that he's facing or what he um, sees as issues in our community and a wider uh, national community. A lot of people subscribe to that and, and follow it um, and listen to him just sharing and, and, and doing his thing. So, yeah, you could do it, um, but I probably wouldn't call it a podcast. So if you're marketing it as a podcast, people are probably thinking there's a conversation, uh, there's yeah. a bit of back and forth, maybe a bit of drama, maybe a bit of awkwardness, you know. Um, I love even keeping the awkward moments in there, you know. It doesn't have to be too polished. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. Uh, the next one, this is from Mandy uh, Moo Barton, and she asks, do you know the guest's story before the podcast? Yeah, so I would do three or four points about moments in that um, that person's, you know, life. I think before Mandy uh, came on last Monday, um, I think you guys uh, knew a bit of her story, where she's come from, what she's doing for work, family, where she lives, where she resides, um, you know, what she's doing the business for, so her why. So you're really gathering four or five. Now, depending on your emotional intelligence, if you've got high emotional intelligence, if you've got strong, soft skills, you're going to be able to tell people and their story and what they're doing and where they're from because you're just good with people. Um, if you're not as uh, you know regimented like that, you might need to actually do more of a formal process. Um, so maybe someone coming from like an accounting or numbers background, they might be asking for more detailed things. And if it's an industry-specific podcast, and so then when we get into the technical you know, I listen to the um, the energy podcast that comes out um, from the guy, guys there, Giles and, and the crew. And that's really specific and technical about um, designing renewable energy systems, issues it's face, issue we face with the grid. And it goes into that. So a normal person is going to have no interest in that. So it depends on how deep you're going. If you say Mandy did one on health and she talks about talks to other elders who are doing different health methods or maybe they drink lemon myrtle tea every day or they did this or walk this far and they live to 110, then um, she would already know their story. So she's just documenting it for their own safety. But, yeah, a good research before you start, you know, you stalk them on Facebook, stalk them on LinkedIn as well. You could do it just a double double take as well. So I've got this guest and you jump on Facebook and they're down, you know, partying outside of lockdown and you're probably like, oh, you know, because you're sharing them on socials and then people are going to click on them and they end up seeing them partying outside lockdown. You'd be like, okay, well, maybe, you know, so a little bit of due diligence wouldn't hurt. Great. Uh, this one is from Nicola. 
Uh, thanks, Isaac. More to Jackson's question. Uh, what about having multiple guests or does it become too complicated? Yeah, sure. So this is a confidence thing um, for me uh, because you've got potential that your guests could run away and you've also uh, run away off the show. Um, and you also want to be able to interject yourself. So if you're a good panelist and maybe a, a moderator um, or mediator, um, that does stuff, you know, sister, um, Jira, you know, she's fantastic at facilitation. Um, other people I've seen Leanne, um, there's other people who just, that's like second nature. So someone like them could get on a podcast and easily control, um, this, the situation and the three personalities, because what you are always going to have, there's always going to be one dominant, more dominant, stronger personality in the room. There's also going to be someone who wants to talk to the cows come home. There's also someone who's going to take a back seat and just be like, you know what, I'm not stressed if I don't talk. So you want to bring them all in, rotate them. And you also want it to be diverse too. You know, you want to talk about, you know, um, Indigenous rights and have a panel of uh, non-Indigenous people who don't. So you want to all have a token, you know, you want to talk about, you know, the issues in Hong Kong and then you've got no Hong Kong people on the panel. So you want to actually have it diverse. You want to have a male, female, best your ability that you can, obviously different um, technicalities and skill sets are different, but you want to balance it out. And I aim to try to have 50% um, male, 50% female for the podcast. But then sometimes it doesn't work because you book someone in, they don't come, and you book someone else and they don't come. So it's all about, you know, making that effort and um, putting that clear, again, objectives. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And I suppose you can see that in, more, in a more practical sense where you were fortunate, fortunate enough to have you facilitating um, the Yarning Circle yesterday on the Kinaway channels as well. So actually sitting here and uh, listening to, you know, your tips about podcasting, um, you know, kind of looking back and uh, watching this video, um, after after yesterday you can actually see that being applied um by Thank yourself you know, it did run did run really smoothly so i'm taking some tips um from yourself <laughs> today um the next one is from jess and she asked where can i find deadly discussions yeah sure so um spotify stitcher um itunes you know it's funny when i started sort of um a bit of a funny one when i started there was another podcast called deadly discussions podcast and it was about murder so <laughs> it's deadly so um so what happened is like people were like i can't find it because when you start off you slowly got to build up to get that momentum and then you get um you get uh, listed more and um people were like oh is it about this murder in savannah you know <laughs> it's like no 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 so so it was like um yeah finding your, your niche and um also yeah that's a practical one name check as well now if you name check and you say you know you've got a podcast we'll use um uh, Dion, brother Dion, he's got his design and a supply. Also. Maybe he might say supplying the Torres Strait, you know, supplying Thursday Island or something like that. Now, if you went and Googled that and there was already another one podcast or show or even it was a radio, local radio show there, um, you got to weigh up, okay, do I still want to go after that name? Will it be much competition? Will people get confused? And then just make that decision. But if you're doing it long term, you know, people... I will identify it slowly. You bring in the colors or the branding. So then people have got that association. Um, you've got your face. And then it also, long term, you can look at then sponsorships, you know, so people within those. So if you were doing something around Torres Strait and export, importing there, or business development, maybe someone like DFAT, Department of Foreign Aid, would come in and, and sponsor that, and that'll supply, um, you know, Austrade, all the different groups that want to spot, or maybe even a private contractor over in. Um, the Torres Straits wanting to create that awareness of getting those things in. So, yeah, it, it all depends. Perfect. Uh, I am uh, conscious of time, so we'll take one more question and then we'll have yep. to wrap it up uh, for this morning. Uh, and the final question is from George. And he asks, what about taking a video of the podcast as well? Or does that add another level of complication? Yeah, sure. If you're doing it yourself, you know, it'll be a bit of more of a learning curve, um, just setting it all up. But once you get it going, it's it's pretty good. Um, you want to have, I've got um, my video on a different stand so it doesn't sit on my TV. So you want, I mean, my monitor. So you want to have that flexibility. You can even add two cameras um, in. I know this software that you guys are using, you can have a separate camera in there that you can bring up and take off. So people have got different angles and different action, um, you know, um, things going on. And the other factor, George, is um, lighting. So you want to make sure you've got the light. So I'm facing my window. I've got natural light. I try to record only in the day. 
Otherwise at night, it looks like I'm in a cave somewhere. So I try to do it uh, in the day, natural light. If you do it at night, obviously you can get light box or other ring lights or different things to have as well. But you also want that video, if it's gonna be the, the thumbnail, you want it to stand out. So that will also require a bit more graphic design work where you're going in Canva and uh, you can still use Adobe, but Canva is a lot quicker to do it and, and quite effective. So you can jump onto Canva, Aussie company as well. I think they're getting listed or have got listed. Congratulations to those guys. Um, you wanna jump on, um, jump on there, get your face, get something in there. And so it's a bit more mucking around. And if that's not your skill set, then you can just stick to the audio side as well. So it all takes time and time equals money, whether you're not getting money because you're doing podcasts or you know, you're know you getting money because you are, it all depends. So it's all about trade-offs and working out, again, back to objectives or what am I doing this for and what's the outcome that I want. Perfect. Thanks, brother. Um, I just want to thank you uh, again for joining us uh, today. And I want to thank you for bringing up uh, your team beating me at the uh, National Indigenous Football Championships too. Yes, so, we did. 3-1. Uh, you did. So, yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for joining us today. And um, thanks to all uh, for everyone who tuned in um, for, for today's webinar. Um, awesome. For all you wider uh, Kinaway community, uh, don't forget to tune in on Friday at 11 a.m. as we have Mer Mervyn Fernando uh, from Claystone Marketing presenting. Uh, Mervyn's webinar will provide an overview of social media and marketing strategies and tools and to highlight online marketing opportunities for Indigenous businesses. Uh, through this webinar, you will gain a solid understanding of how you can facilitate your marketing strategy online as an Indigenous business. Uh, you gain a good understanding of social media marketing and the channels available to your business, um, a good understanding of email marketing using MailChimp and a sound understanding of Google Analytics, uh, what it does and how to apply it. Um, we look forward to seeing you all on Friday. And in the meantime, if you feel like you may need support in any way, uh, please reach out to Kinaway or the mentioned support services available, um, as I mentioned previously uh, in this webinar. Uh, we hope you're all keeping well uh, and enjoy today's webinar and we will see you all on Friday.